First Spin. Welcome to First Spin, a show where I learn how to use the Parallax propeller without having any prior programming experience. And rather than do this on my own, I have enlisted the help of two experts. I'd be a bigger expert on the TV text stuff than I am on the VGA text stuff. Well, they're basically the same. They just output to different places. Mm. I uh, I worked with the t- the TV out one on my podcast clock generating mm-hmm. composite video, um, which we sent to Roy over Skype. That was fun. Oh. Although you don't send it to me right now. No, no, not today. No. Yeah. Did it did it take a bandwidth? And did you use Spinneret? Not too bad. Did you have to use Spinneret? No. No. Just, Actually, you know what we should just do? TV out. We should totally into my black magic um um intensity extreme video capture thingy. I see. Thunderbolt. The names are just ridiculous. One. It two, is. It's like redundant redundancy. Yes. <laughs> two, we should totally talk about uh using spinneret because you know how to use that. Roy and I do. Yes, you and you Roy don't. know how to. And I just think it's like the butt parts of a spider. So it is. <laughs> <laughs> so I actually wrote some network code that was called Spinner years and years and years ago, and I saw that Parallax or the guy who designed the board anyway, who designed it again, Roy? I don't know. Actually, I it could really have been Chip. Could have been Bo. Dave. It could have been Dave. Dave. It could it have been Dave. John. I saw that they named it that, and I was could like, Hey, I would. I, I, ah. <laughs> spider butt parts <laughs> spider butt parts <laughs> think about it like they I was watching this spider one time handler. I was just watching this tiny little spider and like I, I like kind of flicked it a little bit and it let out the longest string of butt slime and it was just like what is this you mean spider silk <laughs> yes you know but it's kind of creepy well like, imagine you're if like, something like 300 they times taller much... than you walked up to you while you're sitting there on the toilet and is like Thump, and bumped you across the room. I wouldn't be. What would your reaction you would be? Probably leave a trail. But of I would. <laughs> but I wouldn't be spewing silk. I mean, <laughs> you know? you're not capable of spewing silk, so you would spew guts. You'd be even nastier. Um... I've I've played Minecraft with her, so I know what she spews when she's when hey. she's afraid, and it's not uh, guts. It's a yeah, profanity. Vile sailor. Yeah. <laughs> there are kids that listen to this. Nothing that can be repeated. There are here. children that listen to this. Yes, yes. So we won't. Never go there. mind. We do not say such things. We don't. So, Roy and I are so, really good, uh, upstanding people, but you. <laughs> hey. So, so Whisker, Model for citizen. your, uh, just so you'll, you'll be comforted, the VGA text uses exactly the same stuff as TV text. Now, I you was mean, getting like the in there and them. I was getting in there and hacking on the actual colors and how they're sort of done in the flipping back and forth of the the clocks. I think um, mm. is I don't think that would be the same, would it? No. Well, sort of, kind of. And same on... idea, but you know, different because you're talking about one wire compared to like three. Yeah. yeah. Well, the the composite does it a different way. You have the little color burst clock and all that fun stuff. And uh, yeah. All well, right. That was the stuff I was playing. So, with, so. Yeah. let's uh, first backtrack for the noobs in the room, such as myself. <laughs> Continuing who... from last week, where we yes. were talking about VGA. Yes. Output from a prop BOE. Correct. So last week. Is... We talked Which is about also this... This, very similar to if you were using like the demo board or uh, a, a PPDB, the prof- professional board, or any of the other boards that have a VG output. It's very similar. Right. It just might be on different pins. Correct. So yeah. Eddie uh, was asking us about the hardware on there, and she um, well, I was explaining she interrupted it. during the closing of last week's show. Mm-hmm. So every time she talks this show, Roy and I are going to interrupt her. Yeah. <laughs> it's a new plan. <laughs> it's a game. Everybody can Actually, for... we have had we have had multiple people say that. So yeah, you we two... were explaining how to um connect the hardware and how the hardware what? worked to Hattie last week. And uh yeah, she seemed to understand it. A little two bit DAX and all that sort of thing. Right. You, you done? 
You, What's that? You good? Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> you sure? Yep. I'm gonna have a hard time keeping a straight face <laughs> through all this. <laughs> And, and, uh, <laughs> all right so yes last week we went through the hardware and uh, this week we are going to go through so, uh, one of the software pieces if possible maybe two but for now we'll go through the vga text demo which was written by our dear chip gracie the maker of propeller chip and mm -hmm. uh this object well the demo can be found in the propeller tool uh demo folder and all of the objects. Huh? It's in the library demo folder. Yeah. Okay, library demo folder. And then in the library itself, uh, the objects that it uses, VGA underscore text dot spin and VGA spin are there. So my question is, should we start uh, top down or bottom up? Top down is probably the best route. Okie dokes. Because you'll understand the higher level stuff first. and then Correct. And I'll get con progressively more confused. Yeah. As we've... <laughs> okay. It'll be fun. Yes. <laughs> All right. She understands the high level stuff. She understands the absolute low level stuff. Just all that stuff in the middle that confuses her. Do I understand <laughs> the low level stuff? Well, like the electronics. Oh, yes. Resistors and capacitors. That is yeah, true. Yeah, yeah, how the DAC works, she understands. She's fine with that. Are we going uh, back the, into Sigma Delta? The, no. No. <laughs> the, um, the upper level, she gets it fine, and everything in between is a crap ton. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> crap ton of crazy. All right. So uh, VGA text demo version 1.0 author Chip Gracie copyright 2006. Yeah. We don't need to read the comments. Just saying. Just the so. con section. We got the Standard clock con mode. Section yep. The clock. X and freak. We all know that uh, OBJ object. You know, every single We're time. We're VGA text, which is like another pre-written object to allow you to do text on a VGA display, but using commands that are really familiar to you, which is, you know, kind of similar to the serial terminal stuff. Yes. Where you do stir for strings and out for single characters. And Correct. Hex yeah. to display a hex number and stuff like that. You're working on the we'll compiler and stuff for the next version. Can you see if they can add a OBC um, section <laughs> to go with the con and the OBJ and the... See, PBB? that is exactly what I was going to say because but every I single say... First. Now it's my idea, and you can't have it. You hear that, and Jeff? What would this OBC section be? Whisker love, man. Whisker love. I don't know. What does Jeff do? He basically makes a bunch of cool stuff. So a crap ton. You just put OBC in there, and it just makes your code better. And... <laughs> oh. Yeah. <laughs> That's what you're saying. Okay, so it, after your it could con be like OBJ, a like a like a <laughs> it just makes it better. Yeah, <laughs> just like a silver a silver color in the. Uh... In the uh, you know, in the have it glow tool. with like the little little things that march around. What are those things called? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? No. Like you know, in like old school HTML, where you'd have those little like lights that march around the header. Or something. Little, you know little what I'm talking. About. The little ants or something like that. Is that what they call them? I have no idea. Are you kidding me? <laughs> it was like the mark anyway, of a of an awesome page. Back to VGA text. All right. Anyway, so OBC, you have made your mark. Um. Okay. Right. So OBJ VGA text. Uh, that is the object which Roy just talked about. So then pub, we got start, and we have a local variable i, and mm -hmm. the text dot start sixteen. So, uh, the one thing to note with this, you know how last week we change the hardware so that it went from pins 8 to 15 uh -huh. well here in this code is where you'll want to change the 16 to 8 to signify the starting pin of, of the VGA, the yeah, VGA. I was gonna say it's 16 because <clears throat> that that was the where the VGA connector was on the demo board it was on pins 16 through 23 mm -hmm. Correct. and uh, some of the other boards that are out there have them on the same pins 16 through 23. The BOE uses those pins for other things, so you have to use pins 8 through 15 or, or 0, zero to 7. Two, seven. Yep. Yeah. So whichever one you use, make sure you do that. Otherwise, your VGA screen will say no, no. no input signal. Yep. Right. And we covered <laughs> so. in detail last week as 
or why. Yes, correct. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so then if I think of it like a serial terminal, text.str string 13, which is a carriage line, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and then it sends VGA text demo dot dot dot. And then it sends a whole bunch of nonsense. Well, it sends two 13s, which is just two more line feet, you know, carriage returns. And then it sends oh, a, I do see. a dollar sign C, which is hexadecimal for C. And in in the VGA text code, there's actually a table of what these codes mean. But the 12? values from 0 through C are different commands to do things. And in the case of C, it's a change to color. Oh. So it's changing the color to color number 5. So the color of the text or the color of the background? The color of the text. So dollar sign C is change. Five well, change color. Change color. Five yeah. is the text. No, five is the color or, to choose from. Okay. <clears throat> and it has a table in the back. At the at the bottom of the table, there's a little and five I think is cyan. Okay. Right. So it's like uh or no, it's green. I'm I apologize. Five is green because okay. it starts at zero. Okay. Um and then so if you if you have VGA text open, do you have VGA text? Uh, I do. Yes. You can see the out command. If you scroll down, there's pub out. Pub. Pub out. Out C. Then, pub out C. Yeah, and then see the see the output of character and the little table there where it shows you zero equals clear screen and one equals home and. Uh huh. Yeah. And C equals set color. Yeah. Color follows. So that's where you, those are the commands that it will accept. Okay. And then if you scroll down all the way to the bottom in the green section there, you'll see palette. And it has the table there from zero to seven for the different colors. Okay. That's yeah. just how you can tell what color each number is. So zero so is white. So percent C and then to five. So five well, you, is the yeah. green slash gray green. Right. Those are just the, you know, the red, green, and blue are in those double percents, which is the qu the quaternary or whatever, uh, the base four numbering that the prop tool can do. Woohoo. Okay. <laughs> but the important thing is just to note that in the comments next to it, it has the colors. White, yellow, magenta, gray, cyan, green, red, and... Now, for the five, it says there's percent, percent, zero, two, zero, and percent, percent, two, thirty-two. So when you say five, which one is it choosing? Well, it's, you can well, go down it's there got... to the palette and look at the numbers in the comments after and make it real easy. Got... Or you could, you know, actually calculate out the quaternary to decimal and get the number that way. Huh? But you could just use the quaternary number if you want to do. Huh? <laughs> So it's the if you look at the top, it's the foreground RGB and the background RGB. Yeah. So it, it the first column is the foreground colors for the text, and the second column is the background colors. Right. Behind the text. Right. So when you use five for the color of the text, it's going to use green, and for the background, it's going to use the gray green. Okay. And let me um, I'm gonna show you guys. I'm gonna send um, uh, uh, Roy what it will look like, what this demo looks like, and then I will show you guys if you guys can click on it, um, show you guys what it looks like, because I'm trying to figure out where the colors match in response. Yeah. So, so I see, see the how green, I see the green text. It's got green text with sort of a gray background. It's a gray green, slightly green gray background. Oh, so it does so both. It does both. So oh. when you choose five, it chooses both the foreground and background color. Okay. Now, how did the VGA text demo know to be white on blue? Because it defaults to color, the first color, right? Which I believe is... Oh, zero, I see. But that's white oh. on dark. Blue. Okay. So white on blue, VGA text demo, carriage return, carriage return, uh, then change the color to five, which is green text on gray-green background, 
And then OBJ right. and VAR require only 2.6 kilobytes. And right. then it changes color and goes to one, which is yellow on brown, which is just ugly. Yeah, but as you can see in the picture, which you should link in the comments for this. Yes, episode, I will. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, you know, it's sort of a yellow on a Puke. brownie green. Puke brown and green. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. But it looks all right. I mean, you can read it. But we didn't have to um, do a carriage return for it to go to the next one. Isn't that strange? No, it, it's just printing spaces, right? So it, it filled up the, the one line. Like, oh. they noticed the demo filled up all the characters of that one line with the OBJ and VAR require only 2.6 KB. Yeah. So oh, and then the next time it says repeat 14 and text out and it, spaces. So it does yeah. 14 spaces. Brings it to right. the next line. Right. Which also puts it so that it's right under where it says require right there so that the very first character will come out under the E. It might be helpful for you to think of the, the, the screen as one big long string. And you can set each character in the string to yeah. a different value. Yeah. Um, right. It all strings together like that. Okay. Right. So, Okay. And then it um, loops over so from... So, one second. Can I ask... So then if I did... Uh, right after the OBJ and VAR... Let's say between the OBJ and VAR, I put dollar sign C comma 2, right? Uh -huh. So the OBJ and VAR would be that green on white. And then if I did comma 2, the require only 2.6 KB would be magenta on black? Yeah. Oh. And then, so if okay. if you change the number after the dollar sign C to some other number, it'll choose one of the other entries in that table that I showed you on the end of VGA text. And can right. I change that table? Um, yeah, you could edit those values. That they're, the three values are for red, green, and blue, and they can be zero to three, right? And they represent the two bits on each color right so zero one what? two and three connect to the two bits of zero one two and three for red green and blue that's what i was saying earlier you can, yeah you can set them to whatever you want <clears throat> that's kind right. of what i was doing with the uh the tv i was changing the actual <laughs> the output you know, colors yeah. i see okay yeah. so and... you could go edit this table or you could add more to it to mm -hmm. the end you could add more rows mm -hmm. so you could have higher color numbers Mm -hmm. um, but it, it has to be, uh, I think it maxes out at, um, you know, eight or 16 or something. Like it only reads the next character. So whatever will be in the next character okay. is what it is. Okay. And then repeat I, which was the local variable from dollar sign zero E to dollar sign FF. And those are, I assume, ASCII. Yeah, it's just printing out all of all of the characters. It's actually more than ASCII because the font that's built into the propeller chip actually has, you know, a whole bunch of characters beyond the regular ASCII. Mm -hmm. So in ASCII takes, goes up to what one twenty seven, and then everything past that is extended ASCII. Yeah, and technically ASCII starts at twenty. Everything before twenty is non printable mm -hmm. characters. Okay. But in on the propeller, the font has characters from E, 0 E on mm -hmm. in hex. So it's got values before 20 hex, which is 32 for the space. Which will right? be very useful for your uh, your ASCII art, your text right. art, because you've got a lot of symbols um, built into the prop that you wouldn't normally have access to, which is right. one yeah, it's got like... So, if, and if you look at the output it's picture... Got, like, wait, it's got Sigma Delta, guys. Well, yeah, it's got symbols. <laughs> it's, got, it's got a whole bunch of symbols that are handy for making little schematic diagrams. Okay. And a lot of the propeller programs use these symbols to draw out a schematic in the comments up at the top to tell you how to hook up things, okay. right? Okay, okay. And so they've got all the standard, you know, resistor and diode and... Uh, capacitor and various different lines crossing each other with little dots to connect them and turning corners and all that fun stuff. And a bunch of uh, 
symbols that you could use to make, you know, and gates and or gates and whatnot. Sure. It's pretty handy stuff to. It actually looks like if you're trying to make a game and like you could, you could even make like a, like a textile based game. You yeah. Get tons of tiles there to work with. Cause that's really cool. Okay. Yeah. All right, and then, so... of course, at the very end, it's got all the little uh, foreign for like European right. words with all the symbols, umlauts and squigglies and whatnot over all the little letters. Right. Galdern foreigners. Yep. <laughs> okay, so then text out I Talking and that just you, cycles through. And then text dot str string dollar sign C. So it changes the color. Uh. C to six, which if which we is go the, back, is, is red on pink. On pink, yeah, yep. red, red on, on pink. pink. It yeah. then uses internal ROM font, and then mm -hmm. changes the color again. C to two, two which, is, which is the magenta on black. Magenta on. Let me see. Yep. I see. Magenta on black. Um. Now. Okay. Uh, now internal ROM font I see takes. Oh, never mind. They added spaces in there so that it would take up an entire line. Okay. Right. Exactly. Okay. So then text string string dollar sign a. Don't know what. So that what is. what that's doing a is to set the position on the screen. A and B set the X and Y position on the screen. Oh. So they're okay. setting it to the X position of twelve and the Y position of fourteen. Okay. And the text screen is is 15 rows, yeah. right? There's 15 rows there, and so they're numbered from 0 to 14. Ah. So it's saying to put it on the bottom row. Okay. And then 12 is, like, near the middle there, right? Spaced over. Okay. So instead of putting spaces, they're showing another way you can... Go to an exact position to... on the screen. I see. Right. Okay. And then they're displaying a hex number counting up starting at zero and just going forever. I plus plus. Yeah, so that increments I, but it displays it first as a yes. hex number with eight digits in it. That's what the comma eight is for. Okay, all right. And so then it's printing an eight-digit hexadecimal number that's counting up, and eventually it wraps around after it gets to F, 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 back to zero and just keeps going. I see. So if you let the demo run for a long time, you'll see it count really quickly up. I see. That was a lot easier than I thought it'd be. Yeah, we'll see. Cause this chip made this text display stuff pretty easy. Right? Very nice. Okay, and then if we so if we can go to VGA underscore text, then yeah, which we've looked a little bit at already. Right. But um, so this things. is where it gets a little bit more complicated. Right. It's still all spin. Yeah. So um, we but have it starts using a little bit more advanced features. Right. It has columns, so there are 32 columns. And then rows, as you said just two seconds ago, there's 15 rows, 0 to 14. Right. Screen size is going to be column times row. Last row is screen size minus columns. Right. So just a, a offset to the beginning of the last row of characters is what that's for. Okay. And then what's VGA count? You know, I don't know. Oh. VGA count 21, it, somewhere in here, it uses it for something. Okay. We'll have to see when we walk through the code. Okay. Uh, longs, we have for variables, we have call, row, color, flag. Oh, that's what this is. VGA count is all of these values, that all those longs, VGA status, VGA enable, VGA pins, mode, screen, all those. Mm -hmm. there's, there's 21 of those. What's the point of so, putting down the con section, though? Well, it's the con twenty one is so the when bars it does are a... being created sequentially one after another in memory. So it might be, you know, and then it copies that to just jump around. Yeah, see what it's doing is that it's copying them over to another place for the for the PASM driver to read. Okay. So that's what that's for. And it's gonna be outside of the realm of stuff you understand because it's you know, it's dealing with PASM. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. All right. But just think of it, it's just, this is how the spin code is communicating with the PASM driver to tell it what to do okay. and how to work. All right. And this is like all variables that configure the display for like how many, 
you know, where to start and end the characters and how how many lines to draw and all this fun stuff that's all low level VGA signal stuff. Right. Okay. And then we have our OBJ, uh, which is referencing the pin, the PASM right. code. The VGA dot spin. PASM file. Yep. Yep. Start base pin. Uh that's You could add ten times the resolution there if you'd also use an OBC. It's true. <laughs> yeah. So the so the start function is the thing you call to set everything up, right? right. And you tell it the base pin, which is what pin that it should configure okay. for what to drive with the video driver. Oh, and, and so then and you see where it says out zero? Is that where it where the why the default is the white on blue? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Well, no, hold on. Or, let, me, let me look at that real quick, just to make sure I'm, it outputs a. It's a clear the screen. Oh. That's okay, what that's. Never doing. mind. <laughs> so the set colors command. Yeah. With the at palette. Yeah. That's saying the address of the palette, which is that data table all the way at the bottom that I pointed you at that yep. has all those bytes with the colors. Yep. So when it calls set colors, there's a, scroll down a little bit, you'll see the set colors function there. Let me see. It's right below the out function. Oh, yes, yes, yes. So it's looping over and setting the values to, you know, from that table for the colors uh, array, which is up at the top. There's a long that has colors eight times two in the var section. Mm. Back up at the top. Yes. Okay, so it's setting uh, that yes, okay. table of colors to the values that are in that table at the bottom. Okay. And then that's what gets passed into the PASM driver so it knows what colors to use. Okay. All right. It tells it to use those colors. It's confusing a little bit. <laughs> okay. So the you know, we, we do the set colors and it fills in the color array with the data from the table at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Then it does an out zero, which just Clear clears the screen. The screen. Mm -hmm. And then does this move, this long move where it's copying the, the VGA parameters okay. to, to the data table that's in the DAT section, which if you scroll down to the bottom, there's a VGA params and a whole bunch of longs mm -hmm. with numbers. Mm -hmm. And that's like the, the setup values for all these things. So you can see there's like enable is set to one and pins will be set to the pin that you specified. Mm -hmm. So VGA pins colon equals base pin and right. Okay. So that's what the, this is just setting up the data values to pass into the VGA driver. Okay. Right. And okay. so then it, then it calls VGA start and passes in VGA status, which is the first of those 21 variables. Okay. Right? Sure. And that I gets... probably couldn't write this, to be honest. I understand, but, it, but it's kind I of... But I kind of this get is, it. This is similar. You do something kind of like this with a lot of things that interface with PASM. Yeah. You set up some data in variables. Yeah. Like all these longs have various values that they end up getting configured to set to. You're putting and then in you a pass specific them order into... in memory, and then you're passing the address of where that pile starts over to your, your PASM code. Right. And then the PASM driver reads all those values in assembly language and does stuff with them to draw the screen. Okay. Okay. I think And so. that's yes. it's sounds complicated. It's not really that complicated, but it's just a matter of organizing the learn, data. Right. And until you learn PASM, we can't really explain the other side of it. Okay. Right. Where it reads all those out and draws the display. All right. All right. Well, we can't go into any more depth this week cuz we're out of time. Yes. Yeah. I, th I think well, that's okay, not, though. I mean, yeah, there's not that much. I mean, we've already kind of covered the out and the set colors and whatnot, and there's really not that much more to this. You're really just drawing characters into the little screen array. Yeah. And, and then the I driver is reading them. Tomorrow to next week. Yeah, next week. We're going to um, sort of talk. I don't know if Eddie wants to, but she's going to have to. 
Uh, we're going to talk about what kinds of uh, trickery we can use with this mode on a VGA display to actually do stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Practical application time. All right. That's all the time we have for this week. You guys can find this show every Tuesday evening at firstspin.tv. There's an RSS feed there if you want to automatically get the show on your phone, your iTunes, whatever. Or you can mm -hmm. just click play right there on the page. It's real easy. That's it for us. We'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye. Later.